Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of A New World, where I attempt to gain the technology needed to colonize Lathe, and to do that we need to get science. So this is what this is. This is doing a little bit of a science, or, you know, a little closer to home. It's not going to space, it's testing technology and all that reasons for just doing this. Anyway, so yeah, Jeb is at the helm so I can actually control this without, you know, flying it into the ground, as I almost did when I let a scientist fly in a capsule. How ridiculous! Scientists don't go to space until I have a capsule big enough to hold a pilot and a scientist and an engineer because I probably will break a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I'm just grabbing a few ma materials base sort of things because I unlocked them and I uh, haven't really used them yet. Um, so I try to test out all the new um, technology around the uh, launch pad just so I get all the science basically. But yeah, let's try not to break this, land it softly on the... Uh, land it softly on the engine so that it's uh, landing softly and not killing me softly. Or killing Jeb softly. Um, new cover I'm working on, no I'm joking. I would probably never do that because then you'd have to hear me sing and then you would all die. Um, well, you know, kill yourselves. Uh, <laughs> it's not that bad, yeah, it's that bad. Anyway, let's see how well we did for, you know, science. There we go, 19.5 does that say? I don't know. I have to watch this as a half res resolution because Sony Vegas cannot keep up with the mad skills, um, the skills, I don't know. Uh, and we got pretty much all the money back, so it wasn't too expensive. Anyway, now we've been assigned to test those uh, radial engines, and I don't have much money, well I do, but I don't want to waste it, so um, I decided to use a solid rocket booster as my first stage. It's quite a small solid rocket booster and doesn't have a huge amount of delta V, so I have a bigger second stage. And then that top stage is just for testing those engines. Anyway, we'll ditch that and just launch ourselves into orbit. Um, using this, uh, that engine is uh, pretty much my favorite engine. It's a KW rocketry engine. It's um, the Vestra, and it provides 120 kilonewton, kilonewtons of thrust and has an ISP of 400. It's a pretty nice sweet spot engine. It's kind of in between the LV909 and the LVT45s sort of thing and has a very nice ISP. Um, I've actually taken a massive craft of Duna on that before, if you watched my old series, Solar Civilization. Which was before this, but died due to old files. Anyway, I don't actually quite make it into orbit, so that attempt to save money was very costly. Very costly, indeed. But, um, yeah, to make up for it, I grab a little bit of science and then uh, just bring Jeb back. And I'm going to keep this little bottom stage, which I was going to ditch, but I thought, well, I did just waste money on that launch vehicle, so yeah. Um, didn't pack enough Delta V because I kind of overestimated how much Delta V that solid rocket booster has. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to land this safely, get a little money back, and launch again on a much better rocket. Because I'm going to need money to start upgrading my, um, my, uh, launch pads and space center and stuff. As I start to realize in this episode, uh, I am going to need to start upgrading soon because I start to hit the part limit and the mass limit. So yeah. Let's move on to the next thing, which is, um, well, for me, it's a black screen because Sony Vegas isn't being great. But what it is and uh, is the launch of basically that again on a slightly better rocket using full liquid fuel um, engines, which can be throttled and things. It has a lot more Delta V. Um, I assume it's launching right now. Again, I can't see because Sony Vegas is being very, very kind to me. Um, so yeah, this is just basically going to go into orbit and do the same thing. Well, um, do the same thing, but successfully. Um, it will, you know, launch to a reasonable altitude within the testing, um, the test limits, which I believe are about 76, between somewhere about 76,000 meters and 80,000 meters. Oh, got a bit of, uh, oh, wow, we're in space. Um, Sony Vegas blanked out, then came back, it was like, oh, hey, and then we were in space. So yeah, I think, what does it say? But, between like 76,000-ish and 80,000-ish, again, low quality. Um, so yeah, I did use the those engines for the second stage to get into orbit, and I do need to activate them th through the staging to do the test. That's very simple, you just shut them down, put them back in the staging, and then just kind of activate them and get the money, because you've got to get the money, got to get paid. Um, and I do have the ambient light mod installed, so now you can see the spacecraft in the dark. How wonderful. Um, it is a little bright, but I don't mind because it makes for better viewing quality. Anyway, now we've got the money from that and a little bit of science, I believe. We will return to Kerbin, victorious and paid and very well moneyed. Jeb will get a nice bonus and go and buy a new car or something to drive to the 
well, there's only if there's like two places on the planet. Oh no, the now there's like sites as well. There's like um those facilities you have to fly over. So he'll drive to a facility or something. I don't know. There's probably Costa somewhere or Starbucks. It depends what he likes. If he likes um companies that make nice coffee or companies that you know pay their taxes. You stupid bastards, Starbucks. Actually, I quite like Starbucks coffee. Um, but they don't pay their taxes. That was quite an old news story, not exactly topical, but still, never forgiven them. Anyway, we land in a nice looking, I think the desert or something. So let's get Jeb out and get an EVA report of desert. Yep, the desert right next to the ocean. Um, store that experiment and grab some uh, EVA reports from the surface. Get all the science we can, because we are all about the science. Um, uh, well, Jeb's all about the base, but you know, he's got to do science before he can go buy a new base. Um, so yeah, let's recover this and uh, let's let's spend some of those science points probably. Get a bit of get science, get, get mo mo science, mo problems. Although now it's now I'm playing in full career mode. Um, I can have the whole mo money mo problems thing, and I have like a bunch of money, so I have no problems. I've got like a hundred grand because I'm making fat stacks being um a space math dealer. Uh, it's I'm a spaceman, that's how I make the money. So we'll research this, because I need some fairings, because I have a very lucrative business opportunity coming up to explore an unknown body named the moon. People have been staring at, for, staring at it for a long time, wondering, I wonder how big that really is. So it is our job to find out. So I will need probe cores, and if I'm launching probes, I will probably need fairings, since my probes are rarely aerodynamic. I'm going to use the expanded fairings, I'm just going to buy them right now because I might as well just buy them instead of the smaller ones because I don't, don't need the smaller ones for now. And I kind of feel like I'll need a reaction wheel. But yeah, that is all the kit I will need. But yeah, explore the moon. I will indeed explore the moon. That is going to be part of what today's episode is about. Um, My first kind of attempts at exploring the moon. Unmanned, of course, because we're not crazy. Who knows if the moon will even like us? What if there are men on the moon? who will fire missiles at us and hit us with moon baseball bats. I don't know, moon ball bats. Anyway, um, so yeah, we will send some probes to check it out. Once again, Sony Vegas blacks out. I am going to update this soon, I promise, just because this is getting pretty annoying. But I believe we are on the launch pad right now, or have just taken off with my moon rocket. Um, this is a new fairly decent rocket. It is three stages. The third stage is inside the fairing and that's just for messing around. I am going to be bringing this probe back because I want all of the science. The first objective for going to the moon is to return or transmit science from around the moon. And that is what I will get. I think I've been paid 14,000 as in advance. I'll get 9,000 for each goal. Oh no, well now I've got my vision back. Oh, and it's gone away. Oh, and we got it back. Nice. Um, oh, and it's gone away. Nice, nice, nice. Um, man, I hope this isn't my Fraps footage. Um, anyway, it's the second stage time now, and um, it's just time to push ourselves into orbit on my new rocket, using another Vestra engine. This uh, stage will actually take us all the way to the moon. The um, third stage is just to make sure we can get back, because I want to return this and get all the science from around the moon. Um, we'll ditch those fairings. I have no SAS, as I did not realize, because that reaction wheel is not SAS, and I have no men to, uh, you know, control this, so I have to do it manually. It was horrible. It was d stressful and terrible and things, but yeah, this is exactly 30 parts, and I believe it weighs 17.9 tons, so I am getting to the limits of um, what I'm able to do with my current facilities. But yeah, on completion of the um, of this task, I will be paid 60,000 um, funds, which is very nice, and something I didn't know is I, well, didn't realize is I don't have cotched, um, uh, patched conics, not cotched panics. Um, well, he was panicking, but um, we, we don't have patched conics, so I cannot see if I have an encounter with the moon. But I've done this many a time, and that is my standard trajectory, so I am pretty sure that I will. Um, I only have these non, these static solar panels, so I have to kind of make sure one is always pointing at the moon, so I don't, uh, at the sun even, so I don't run out of electric charge. Um, but yeah, it looks as we, if we did get an encounter, an encounter with the surface, but it is not um, this, um, it is not this pro, uh, probe's dinner date with death today, it has to uh, return home and bring its science with it, because we want all of that science, it does have an antenna if we fail, but we would like to not fail. But yeah, that's an encounter with the moon, um, I'm not going to get too hyped about it, I've been to the moon a few times in my uh, many years as a Kerbal astronaut, I wonder how many times it is, probably about a billion. Uh, 
probably a billion. It's probably been a billion times. Anyway, that is, I believe, 30 science, which is, um, that's the materials bay from above, the high above the moon. Rather disappointing, but it is on hard mode, so we don't get a lot of science. Um, but yeah, so we will be sending many a mission to the moon. Um, of course, many a manned mission, probably a few more probe missions, you know. I need to get into orbit around the moon and get some science from low down, maybe some mystery goo, that sort of thing. But anyway, it's time to return this. It does have a heat shield and such. And now it's on to the third stage to de-orbit around Kerbin. We've been thrown off into a very kind of high trajectory, so it's time to, you know, bring ourselves down. Down into the, into the fiery hell of the atmospheric re-entry on Kerbin, especially with deadly re-entry. But it is fine, I included a heat shield and a parachute tactically mounted on top. Um, almost forgot the parachute, and then I was like, wait a minute, I bet I'm going to need a parachute. Probably wouldn't have, probably could have landed on engines, but it's uh, not safe to land on engines, because I'm a terrible pilot. Um, I'm okay, I'm all right at piloting. But anyway, just setting up the parachute and using the engine to slow myself down so I don't burn up in the atmosphere. Although the probe is pretty much entirely safe. But what is important, well, the important uh, piece of this is the... Um, science package because that is what contains the science and that is what I will be paid for because the first um, goal as I said was to return scientific data from around the moon that is the first of the four tasks I have been assigned to uh, you know complete my mission I need to, and I will get 9,000 funds for this which will almost pay for this spacecraft um, so we'll basically just start to pay for the next one so that I can complete it and get my 63,000 funds which will be used for Many a spacefaring task. Um, but anyway, we're about to touch down softly. Um, and I did not get killed softly, which was nice. And anyway, we're back at the KSC. It is night time. Everyone has gone to sleep, except the people giving me, giving, giving me the money. Um, there's nine grand and 18 science. So let's go to R&D, wake them up, and make them get me some stuff. I want some, um, I actually want this, uh, the um, heavier rockets, because then I can get slightly bigger fuel tanks. Sounds a bit pointless, but considering I'm constrained to like 30 parts, if I have longer fuel tanks, that cut, that halves the amount of parts I need to spend on the fuel tanks. Um, well, you know, it probably won't work out like that because I use some smaller parts, but still, it's always good. Um, so yeah, I will buy that fuel tank, um, or not. I could buy that one, it's much cheaper, but I like the stock one, and you know, it seems fair to pay the real price. And I want that bigger engine, just in case. Um, but yeah, I, I probably won't have to use those radial engines. Those radial engines are only really good for landers, because they can, um, well, because they can gimbal five degrees, I believe. Anyway, um, oh, so, uh, okay, yeah, I thought Sony Vegas had cut out again. But no, we are going to look at these, um, at these, some of these missions. There's some pretty cool ones. I'm very much liking these. They're actually putting a satellite in orbit. That's actually kind of what I've been wanting in the game, um, is just like a job like SpaceX would get to put a satellite in a certain orbit. And I'm going to pick the easier one that requires me to go to a lower altitude. I think it's something like 800 kilometers by 3,000 kilometers. And it pays me, I think, 10 grand up front. Is that something like that? Um, and I think uh, 50 grand in total, which is a very, very nice, um, nice little bit of cash for just putting a satellite in orbit. But yeah, um, they need it for things. The Integral Company, they're very integral. So while I'm exploring the moon, I'll need to make a little extra cash by putting satellites in orbit, much as SpaceX do as they attempt to, you know, build stuff to go to Mars. Um, so yeah, this is my rocket. This is the moon rocket with slightly updated fuel tanks. I thought this was um, a pretty good idea because it didn't means I don't have to design another rocket and I know this works. I know this works very well. Um, a very nice thing I didn't know was in the game is they actually give you this thing you've got to hit. They give you the target and you've got to just do that, which is very cool. However, I am in the wrong position to, you know, launch into that and I need to be in the, you know, exact, well, not exact right orbit, but pretty much right orbit. There's a degree of um, error, obviously, or, or it would be very nearly impossible to do this. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to recover this, actually. We're just going to fold it up, well, fold it up, put it back on a thing, roll it back into the VAB, and then just um, just wait till we're in the right position, because this is not really the right position to launch if I'm going to go into that orbit. So, yeah, um, after much deliberation, I recover the vessel. And I need to go to the um, the tracking set, uh, the tracking station, I mean, if you can call it that. It's a little room where they kind of look at stars and like, yeah, it looks like we're in the right position. 
Um, until I upgrade it, of course. But yeah, so we just need to rotate the planet a bit. I mean speed up time. I mean wait until we're in the right position, that very beautifully clouded planet. I really wish they'd put them in the stock game, but I don't mind too much because, of course, there is a mod for it. But apparently they had trouble when they tried to put it in the stock game because it just ran like death. Um, talking of interesting rockets and um, computing-y things, I was reading today in, uh, actually during doing some computing revision, that once an Ariane 5 blew up because of floating point overflow, which basically means that the floating point number you well the floating point you know position used to store the number couldn't hold the number because it was too big that basically happens when you time say two floating point numbers together and it becomes too big for the binary to hold and it actually caused the rocket to explode which um well that not specifically but that caught you know started the chain of events that caused the rocket to explode which i thought was very interesting so be careful with your maths children or you may um, cause a problem with what is effectively an intercontinental ballistic missile. Anyway, um, talking of intercontinental ballistic missiles, my one is doing rather well. I mean, it, what do you mean ballistic missile? It's totally peaceful. Um, now, nah, we're putting up a spy satellite. Now, I don't know what this satellite is. I designed it like, um, like a communication satellite. I, it would be really cool if they gave you the satellite. I, thought that, I think that would be quite cool, um, because then it's like you're just providing the launch vehicle. Um, and they could do that with the sub-assemblies, but, uh, but it's not to be. But I still very much, I think this is a great addition to the game. Very happy about this. But yeah, I'm just, you know, shifting until I'm in the right orbit. And that's why, this is why I use the moon rocket. Because it's actually quite, it takes a little bit of uh, effort to bullseye uh, an orbit. So um, yeah, I just used a, very, a rocket with a lot of delta V, which I know has a lot of delta V, because, you know, it took me to the moon. Um to do this, and I definitely have the money for it, because I think the rocket costs about 10 grand, and um, I get paid, like, I think total 70 grand for this mission, or 60 grand. So, yeah, pretty happy. Um, but, yeah, that is the right orbit, and we just have to maintain it for 10 seconds, and there we go. Anyway, we are in orbit, uh, relatively high above the planet. It's very um, elliptical orbit. I wonder what this is doing. It's probably not a communications satellite. It's probably, like... Um, I would imagine some sort of radiation scanning satellite, but I don't have any of those tools right now. So um, this is the satellite. Very little, very light. I didn't want to uh, risk it. But yeah, it will last for um, forever because we're not in an N-body system and there is zero resistance up here, which is nice. But yeah, there we go. It's all deployed. And I try and get it positioned, but there is no advanced SES, so I have a lot of problems. But then, um, then time warps ahead for some reason and it locks me in position. But yeah, that is the first satellite above Kerbin that will stay there until the end of time. Um, well, the end of Kerbin's time, until it's hit by like a random rogue asteroid. Anyway, I've got a lot of money now, and given that I'm trying to explore the moon, I think I'll upgrade the launch pad. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's just make the launch pad a little better, it will mean I can launch slightly taller and slightly heavier vehicles. Which will be very good, and yeah, that was quite expensive, but it's, it's definitely worth it considering I'm going to the moon. So yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been episode 3 of KSP A New World. I will see you next time.